Lesson 6.4, Common Denominators. Make sure you've watched Lesson 6.2 and 6.3 that are linked in the description before you watch this one. We can write a pair of fractions as fractions with common denominators by finding multiples of the denominators and using a common multiple as their common denominator. We have one half and one third. We write the multiples of two, because that's the denominator, and the multiples of three, because that's this fraction's denominator. The multiples of two are found by skip counting by twos, and the multiples of three are found by skip counting by threes, and we see they have a six in common. So we can use six as the common denominator. And we think, what can we multiply this two by to equal six? Well, two times three equals six. Then we multiply the numerator by that same number. Now we'll get the new numerator. One times three is equal to three. We do the same thing for one third. We ask ourselves three times some number is equal to six. That would be a two. So we're going to multiply the numerator by two also. We multiply one times two, and that's a two for the new numerator. We will create a fraction pair that have a common denominator. They will have the same number as their denominator. A common denominator is a common multiple of the denominators of two or more fractions. Here we have four eighths and six eighths. They have the same denominator. They have a common denominator. And common denominators are needed to add, subtract, compare, or order fractions. That's why we need to learn to make common denominators. Fractions with different denominators represent wholes that are cut into different parts. And this model is cut into thirds, and this model is cut into sixths. And they're the same length, they're just cut into a different amount of parts. Fractions with common denominators represent wholes that are cut into the same number of parts. Both models are cut into sixths. And common denominators are needed to add, subtract, compare, or put fractions in order by their sizes. We can use paper folding to find a common denominator for one half and one third. We use two pieces of paper that are the same size. We fold one in half, so this one's folded vertically, and the other into thirds. We draw lines on the fold. Then we fold each paper so they have the same number of parts. So it would look like this. So we take this one that we folded in half vertically, and we fold it here and here. And we take this piece of paper, and we fold it vertically in half like this. By combining the folds, we make sixths. And one half and one third have a common denominator of six. After we folded this one in half, we folded it into thirds. So it had the same folds as this one. And after this one was folded into thirds, we folded it into halves like this one. We make sixths. We can write two-thirds and one-fourth as a pair of fractions with common denominators by using common multiples and multiplication. We list the multiples of each denominator, so we need a three and a four. We write the multiples of three as, skip counting by three, three, six, nine, twelve. We write the multiples of four by skip counting by four, four, eight, twelve. And we see they can meet at twelve. And we choose the lowest common multiple. We can stop writing our list of multiples as soon as we find the one they have in common. A common multiple can be used as a common denominator. 3 and 4 have 12 as a common multiple. So that will be our denominator for 2 thirds and 1 fourth. For 2 thirds, we think, looking at the denominator, 3 times some number is 12. Well, that's 3 times 4. We need to multiply the numerator by the same number, 4. Now we can do 2 times 4 and get our new numerator, 8. For 1 fourth, we think 4 times some number is equal to 12. Well, that would be 4 times 3. We multiply the numerator times the same number, that 3, and that gives us 
three twelfths. So remember the numerator and denominator need to be multiplied by the same number or one of them will get jealous. By making common denominators for fractions, we can find out if they're equivalent fractions. Are six eighths and three fourths equivalent fractions? We have denominator eight and denominator four. We write the multiples of eight and the multiples of four. We see they can meet at eight, so this one doesn't even need to change. It's already at six eighths, so it stays the same. We think we need to turn this one into a fraction that has 8 for a denominator. So we think 4 times some number is equal to 8. That would be 4 times 2. We multiply the numerator by that same number 2, and we get a 6. That means we have 6 eighths and 6 eighths. So yes, they are equivalent fractions. And if we write this 6 eighths in simplest form, we would see they are equivalent. We learned about writing fractions in simplest form in the last lesson, 6.3, which is length in the description. We divide them by their common factor. And both 6 and 8 have 2 as common factors because of 2 times 3 and 2 times 4. We get 3 fourths. So that means that one is 3 fourths in simplest form. And then we have 3 fourths. So yeah, they are equivalent fractions. We can use greater common multiples to find common denominators, but using the least common multiple makes math easier. We'll work with smaller numbers. We have two-thirds and one-fourth. We write the multiples of three and the multiples of four and see they meet at 12. They also meet at 24. If we use the 12 as the common denominator, we would do three times four is equal to 12. Then we would have to multiply the two times four, so it's the same number, we would get eight twelfths. We would multiply four times three to equal 12. We would have to multiply this numerator times three. We get three twelfths. If we use 24, we'd have to ask three times some number equals 24, that would be eight. We'd have to multiply the numerator times eight, and that would give us a 16. We'd have 16 24ths. And for this to have a denominator 24, we'd ask 4 times some number equals 24. That would be a 6. We'd have to multiply the numerator times 6. And all of these fractions are equivalent. 2 thirds is equal to 8 twelfths is equal to 16 24ths. And 1 fourth is equal to 3 twelfths, which is equal to 6 24ths. They are all equivalent fractions. These are equivalent to each other, and these are equivalent to each other. Emma has two same size pies cut into the same number of equal slices. One third of the apple pie was eaten, and two fifths of the cherry pie was eaten. What is the least number of slices into which both pies could have been sliced? So. We have a 3 and a 5 as denominators. We're going to write the multiples of 3, and the, we're going to write the multiples of 5, and see they can meet at 15. We ask ourselves, 3 times some number is equal to 15. That would be 3 times 5. So we multiply the numerator times 5. We're going to have 5 fifteenths. We ask ourselves, 5 times some number is 15. That would be a 3. So we're going to put a 3 here, and we're also going to multiply the numerator times 3. We'll get the new numerator of 6. And if you have trouble remembering which is the numerator and which is the denominator, just remember denominator starts with a D, and that stands for down. So the bottom one is down, and that's the denominator. Sometimes one of the fractions will have a denominator that can be used as the common denominator for the fractions. 8 is a multiple of 4, so we can use the 8. We only have to convert this one to have a denominator of 8 and leave this one alone. We ask ourselves 4 times some number is equal to 8. That would be a 2. We multiply the numerator by the same number. We're going to get 2 eighths. So because 8 is a multiple of 4, this fraction got left alone, and we just changed this one to have a denominator of 8. 
we just need to multiply one numerator and denominator to give them common denominators. So remember, to write a fraction in its simplest form, we divide by common factors. Divide by common factors. To find common denominators, we multiply by common multiples. We learned how to do this in video 6.3, so remember it's linked in the description if you missed it. It's very important to know how to put fractions in their simplest form. Are 3 fifths and 4 ninths equivalent fractions? Well, we write the multiples of 5 and the multiples of 9, and we see they meet at 45. That's their common multiple. So we use 45 as the denominator. We ask ourselves, 5 times some number equals 45. That would be a 9. We multiply the numerator times 9. We get 27 45ths. Then we ask ourselves, 9 times some number equals 45. That would be 5. So we're going to put a 5 here, and we're also going to multiply the numerator by that same number 5. We'll get 20 45ths. If we have our basic multiplication facts memorized, we'll go much faster. Now, do you notice that the common denominator was 45, and this was 3 fifths with 5 as a denominator, and this was 4 ninths with a 9 as a denominator, and if we had multiplied this denominator times this denominator, we would have gotten 45. Sometimes we can use the trick of multiplying the two denominators together and using their product as a common denominator. But be careful doing this because it may create a very large denominator that will be difficult to work with and it might not be the lowest common multiple. If we have 2 fifths and 3 fifteenths and multiply the 5 times the 15 to find a common denominator, we would get 75 as our common denominator. We ask ourselves 5 times what equals 75? It would be 15. We saw that here. We would have to multiply the numerator times 15 and get a 30, so we have 30 75ths. Then we would say 15 times some number is 75. Well, we know that's the 5 from up here. We have to multiply the numerator times 5 also. We get 15 75ths, but you know what? We did this, all this work, and we could have just used the 15 and changed only this fraction to have a 15 as a denominator. So by thinking that we're using this trick of multiplying the two denominators together to find a common denominator, we created more work for ourselves. It's better to just find a common multiple, the least common multiple, and use that as the denominator. It says, tell whether the fractions are equivalent or not by writing equal for is equal to or this symbol for is not equal to in the circle. One fourth and two eighths, are they equal or not equal? When we make a list of their multiples, we see they can meet at eight. And if you understand how to find common denominators, you could do this in your head. This is already at eight, so we only need to change this one. And 4 times 2 is 8, and since we're multiplying this 4 times 2, then we have to multiply the numerator times 2. That would give us 2 eighths, and 2 eighths is equal to 2 eighths. We multiplied the 4 times 2 to get an 8. We had to multiply the numerator by the same number. We got 2 eighths, so they are equal to each other. Here we have 3 eighths and 5 sixteenths. Well, this 16 is a multiple of 8, so we just need to multiply it times 2. We multiply the 3 times 2 and get 6. We would have 6 sixteenths and 5 sixteenths. They're not equal to each other. 6 sixteenths is not equal to 5 sixteenths. Now we have 5 tenths and 1 half. We write their multiples. Here's the multiples of 10, the multiples of 2. We see they can meet at 10, so this one will stay as it is. We just need to give this one a denominator of 10, and 2 times 5 is 10, so we'd multiply the numerator times 5, we'd have 5 tenths. So yes, that would be equal. 2 times 5 is 10, and 1 times 5 is 5, so that's 5 tenths. 
So that is equivalent to 5 tenths, and we have 5 tenths, so yes, that's equal. So remember when making common denominators, we need to multiply the numerator and denominator by that same number so the other one won't get jealous. Our next lesson, 6.5, we're going to talk about word problems, and they involve equivalent fractions. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I hope I see you there. Bye.